Working in the field can be a dirty business. The vehicles, machinery, clothes and tools we use to get the job done can get covered in mud, soil and plant material. And at the end of the day, someone has to clean up the mess. Of course, there's all sorts of reasons to keep your vehicle and tools clean. But there is one big one. A dirty vehicle or piece of equipment can cause irreversible damage to our environment. Soil, water, plant and animal material can carry tiny unwanted pest, weeds and diseases that can devastate our environment. These cause diseases in our native plants and animals. They can also make our farmland expensive to manage and unproductive. It's pretty easy to accidentally introduce a harmful fungi, algae or seed to an otherwise pristine area. If that happens, it could spell disaster. A pest, weed or disease can easily hide in a vehicle, or on a piece of equipment, or even on our clothes. It's not just Tassie's beautiful wilderness that's at stake. It could happen on the farm you're working on, or in the bushland that we all enjoy. Before you know it, we've got a huge expense that can last for generations. Our operations have to comply with the Forest Practices Code and that specifies areas that are highly susceptible to Phytophthora root rot so that we have to know which of our quarries are clean so we do a quarry inspection program to make sure we know. As part of that we also don't want to spread declared weeds around so that we do a check for declared weeds in all our quarries too. Forestry Tasmania expects you to arrive with clean equipment to prevent the spread of weeds, pests and diseases in the forest. It's important to the Tasmania Fire Service that vehicles coming in and out of these areas are clean to prevent the spread of weeds, pests and other diseases. As state growth raises our expectations on ourselves in line with our new weed strategy, we expect that all contractors and others that we work with arrive clean and leave clean. Parks and Wildlife Service expects you to arrive with clean equipment to prevent the spread of weeds, pests and diseases. These days, land managers expect anyone who comes onto their property to make sure that their vehicles and equipment are free from pests, weeds and diseases. They simply can't afford to deal with the ongoing management of a newly introduced problem. Give a good wash over there, it'll be fine. The solution is simple. When working in the field, arrive clean and leave clean gone through the various parts of the machine, the tracks, um, uh, sprockets, all the metal subframe, inspected clean, high pressure washed. We ask anyone who uses vehicles and machinery in the great outdoors to make sure it's clean before they get to a site and just as importantly that it's cleaned down properly before they leave. We'll show you some ways to do that later but first let's talk about planning. Good planning starts before you head out on a job. We need to think about how to minimise the risk of spreading nasties from contaminated areas into clean ones. This starts with a good plan. So even though this sort of site isn't much to look at, there's actually a lot of money invested in um, control of Chilean needlegrass here. We spend in excess of $5,000 here every year and probably more than $20,000 down the road at the neighbouring Chilean needlegrass site. Um, they are the result of poor hygiene practices, um, you know, and managing these weeds have a cost, so, you know, keeping the site clean can make a difference. Find out everything you can about the hazards in the area you'll be working. Is there a weed there? Or a vulnerable plant or animal? There is plenty of information online that will help you identify the risks. Local knowledge is critical. Ask the land manager if there's any diseases or weeds you need to be aware of. When you know about the potential problems, you can devise a plan to help you minimise the risk of spreading them. If you need to move around, plan to begin in clean areas first, then work towards dirty areas. We're starting at the headwater of the track here, we've got a small bridge here, we're walking the power barrow over uh, down to this uh, highlighted section here. The amount of effort you put in depends on the risks involved. For example, if you're visiting a highly sensitive environment or a high value agricultural site, then you must take more care. And if you're working in a remote wilderness area, you will find that thorough field hygiene is going to be a big part of your work plan. We also have many hidden gems in our urban areas that are at risk from weeds, pests and diseases. There are plenty of stories of weeds being spread through contaminated landscape supplies, 
gravel, stock feed and garden mulch. Make sure introduced material comes from an accredited source. And keep a close eye on the site that you use this material. Learn to identify the worst offenders. Would you know gorse if you saw it? How about Spanish heath, serrated tussock or the symptoms of phytophthora or myrtle rust infection? You are the front line in our defence against unwanted pests, weeds and diseases. Think about where and how you'll be cleaning down your equipment while you're out and about. It's easy to clean your stuff when you're back at base, but what if you get dirty while you're out in the bush and you need to move to a new site? There is a risk you could drop off weeds and pests along the way. Will you have access to uncontaminated water while you're out? Or an air blower? If there's no possible way to clean down properly, what else can you do to reduce your risks? Can you get home without driving through a pristine area? Planning your movements can help minimise the time spent cleaning your equipment. More land managers now have clean down procedures, plus auditing and monitoring. So that's, um, that's really showing how muddy it is in there, so once we get the high pressure wash we can get right into the sprocket areas and clean that out. Um, right in there and then even then uh, move the machine. If your vehicle, machinery or tools don't pass inspection, you can expect to be refused access to your work site. So don't be surprised when your manager or the person you're working for takes a keen interest. Thanks John, great job out there. And I really appreciate you doing all the wash down, you know, in the areas that we discussed. Um, the spray job looks Like a lot of activities in the workplace, it's all about managing risk. If you can avoid a hazard completely, do it. Don't go into a pristine area unless you really have to. Do everything you can during the planning stage to make sure you minimise the risk. The clean down. If your vehicle is dirty, you can expect to be turned around at the gate. The same goes for your machinery and equipment. If it's not clean, you risk bringing an unwanted weed pest or disease. Clean down is important for all types of projects, from large to small. There can be enough mud on a bushwalker's boots to carry a fungus that could wipe out an entire frog population. Just think how easy it would be for an unwanted visitor to stow away in the wheel arch of a vehicle, the blades of a slasher or on a dirty shovel. For quite a while now, we've been asking anyone who visits our wilderness, bush or farmland to check, clean, disinfect and dry their equipment. This includes bushwalkers, fishers, four-wheel drivers, mountain bikers, utility providers and organisations doing field work. We are all responsible. It's important that your vehicle and equipment are clean before you head out. Though there is a bit more to check, clean, disinfect and dry than just hosing down your vehicle at the end of the day. A lot of the time, it's necessary to clean down between sites, though planning can reduce the number of times you need to do this in a day. Check your vehicle, machinery and all your equipment for mud, water, plant and animal material. Check everywhere, not just the places you can easily see. If you're working in a high risk area, it's important to disassemble the parts of your machinery. Get to know your equipment and teach others who use it which areas hide and collect dirt and other material. Clean it thoroughly with water you can confirm hasn't come from a contaminated source. There's no point washing with water from a creek that might be contaminated. Lots of operators now bring a portable clean down station to wash their gear, making sure it's full of clean water from a treated system or a rainwater tank. Many land managers also have these facilities so it pays to ask them when you're planning your work. When you've finished cleaning, give your gear time to completely dry. Watch where the runoff goes too. We don't want the waste finding its way into a creek or spreading to someone's crops. Most of the organisms we're worried about need water to survive. So if it's dry, they're gone. It's not always easy to get gear completely dry, which is when we need to disinfect. Disinfecting is also absolutely vital when you're working in a remote area, where there are vulnerable species, or when you visit an intensive farm production area. 
If you plan your movements well and allow for adequate drying time, disinfecting might not be necessary. When you're satisfied that everything is clean and dry or disinfected, you are ready to get on site and start work. Remember, we need to arrive clean and leave clean. So once you've finished on a site, repeat the check, clean, disinfect and dry process before you move on. If you do need to clean down back at base, just make sure that anything that's dirty is contained before you travel. If you can't do this, remove the majority of material before you head off site so it doesn't spread on your way back. Check, clean, disinfect and dry should be part of your normal routine. The more often you clean your equipment, the easier it is. So don't let the dirt, mud and grime build up. The amount of effort you make should reflect the degree of risk of your activities. For example, you need to be far more careful when you're operating off a remote bush track than when you're digging in a supermarket car park. What if you notice a problem when you're out in the field? Make sure you talk to your supervisor so you know what's expected of you. If you're slashing and come across a weed, should you raise your blades? Or might you continue slashing and then clean down before moving on? Either way, you need an agreed plan of action. If you notice something of concern, make a note of it, preferably with a map reference, and inform your supervisor. That information is really valuable because it can be used to plan future activity. Keeping your equipment clean is not only good for the environment, it also saves a huge amount of time and money on the part of our farmers and land managers. Making sure your equipment is clean is the least you can do to help protect our environment. It's simple, arrive clean and leave clean.